إني ألقى الإيناس في صومي وصلاتي ودعائي للرحمن وجميع الطاعات. Now the Quran asks a very simple question. In chapter number 52, verse number 35 of the Quran, it says, Am khuluqu min ghayri shay'in am hum al khaliqun? Were they created from nothing? Or were they themselves the creators of themselves? Now if you speak to an educated atheist, they will not deny the fact that the universe had a beginning. Because this is pretty much scientifically proven. Through the expanding universe, for example, we know that it had a beginning, since it's still expanding. Uh, however, when you start speaking to them about what happened before the universe, this is when you get an unsure answer. They'll say, we don't know. And this is the first point of contention. If they don't know, then why do they call themselves atheists? Since that word means without God. And agnostic, which is a better word, means without knowledge. Because it comes from the two Greek words, a, without, the meaning without, and gnostos, meaning knowledge, meaning without knowledge. Moving on now. If you really want to stop an atheist in his tracks, all you really require is one deductive argument. And deduction has always been part of the scientific method and maths, and thus is really the strongest kind of logical argument. Now, the argument goes like this. That everything, number one, everything that begins to exist has a cause. Let me say that one more time. Everything that begins to exist has a cause. And number two, that the universe began to exist, as we've just mentioned. Three logically follows, which is the universe therefore has a cause. Now, the question is, the question is, what kind of cause is this? Because if we say that that cause had a cause, and that cause had a cause, and that cause had a cause, and we go regressively, infinitely backward, then we'd have an infinitely regressive line. Thus, it's completely appropriate and completely necessary for that, for that cause to be uncaused, to have no beginning, and to have the knowledge and creative capacity to change the situation. So, the only way an atheist can really destroy this argument is by destroying one of the two premises. One, which is that the universe, that everything that begins to exist has a cause. They can try and prove that, but then have to show why and how things don't come into existence, popping into existence on a day-to-day -day basis. They won't be able to show you this scientifically or empirically. The other premise is that the universe began to exist, and as we said, science pretty much confirms this reality. Now, this really, I'll leave it open for the atheist. Try and break down this logical argument. Try and break it down. Another argument that you can bring forward to the atheist is what's referred to commonly as the fine-tuning argument. Now, before I begin, I want to define fine-tuning here as the, that the universe is so fine-tuned that it would allow life to exist. I'm not talking necessarily about aesthetics, how beautiful the universe is or whatever. I'm talking about this particular definition that it allows life, any kind of life, to exist anywhere in the universe. Yeah. Now, if you look at Paul Davis, for example, as a cosmologist, he said that now there's broad, basically, agreement. He said there's a broad agreement between the physicists and cosmologists that the universe is fine-tuned for human life. Um, and this is a broad agreement between theists and atheists, believers and disbelievers, right? So you don't have to believe in God to, to recognize this reality. Now there are three, you know, three actual options, as you can choose one of them, to how this universe became so finely tuned. Option number one is that it evolved somehow. Well, this option is not available uh, in physics, and there's no actual evidence of that at all. And no serious physicist has ever made such a proposition. Thus, it's unscientific. Thus, you cannot say that. Option number two is that the universe is 
like this because it's a random generation, it's a chance factor. And this is what lots of atheists actually do say. Now, having said that, if you look at Roger Penrose, he's a physicist in Oxford University, he was talking about the entropy, uh, the entropy levels in the beginning of the universe. Uh, and he says that the, the possibility of the entropy level being the way it is in the beginning of the universe is, and he says, 10 to the power of 10 times 123. And that's a big number. That's just one calculation for one of the components of, of the universe in the beginning of the early stages of the universe. Now, having said that, you should know through just this evidence that saying it's a chance factor that the universe came into being is a ridiculous option that shouldn't even be uttered. The third option is that there was a designer, there was a creator, there was an inventor. This ma makes more sense, doesn't it? If you don't want to admit it now, it doesn't matter. If you don't want to admit it, it doesn't matter. I just want to say something to you guys, to the atheists. Seriously, this is what I want to say. That you don't even need to logically follow these arguments that I'm putting forward to you. These arguments make sense, they're logically grounded, but you don't need to follow them. Because it's actually a natural predisposition to believe in God. And as the Anthropological Society of Oxford University have concluded through some very, in, very, very, very important studies that have happened in 2011, for example, that belief in God is a predisposed belief within children. So to believe in God, you don't have to actually follow any logic whatsoever. You don't have to be a smart person. It should be a natural thing. So I say this. I say it's time now. It's time to stop fooling ourselves. It's time. What did you say? No, I'll say it one more time. I said it's time. It's time to release yourself from the suppressive shackles of atheism that are stopping you from realizing your true potential. Once you've completely taken those shackles away from yourself and liberated yourself from atheism and released your predisposed self. That's the true self, your true self. Once you've done that, then and only then will you realize both peace and purpose in life. Then and only then will you reach the basic human function. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Also, listen guys, if you like the video, um, try and share it. Try and share it to your friends and colleagues, whatever. Uh, and subscribe to the, ch to the channel, inshallah. And also stay tuned to what we're going to do um, in other videos, inshallah.